most of my stories is around church, around camping. Miss Peggy and I have spent a lot of our married life in a camper trailer. And so all of our stories is, is uh, around church. I grew up in church all of my life. Dad was a preacher when I was born. The fact is, when we kids played, we played church. If Mama ever threw a box out, about this big, a small shoe box, which we didn't have many of. We uh, all our shoes used, and uh, we looked for something to kill where well, we could have a funeral. I mean, we would have a good funeral. And if, and if I ever got a hold of a matchbox, them big matchboxes that you could pull down some and display your lizard, that you just yeah, killed just on there, and I preach that funeral, and I talk about that lizard being a good lizard. And he took care and of his family, and everybody time. loved him, and man, we would just, so we would have church, and I'd have my brothers crying. Man, they would just cry over that lizard. Then we'd do, go on a hillside behind the house, and we'd bury him. And we got bored, we'd dig him up, we'd have another funeral. So all my stories is gathered around church and where we lived, and, and I grew up in the mountains in uh, Arkansas. I mean, now when I say mountains, they're mountains. We were mountain people. Peggy accused me of being mean one time. I said, no. I said, the mean folks lived on the creek. We lived on the mountain. And I said, you should have known them mean folks. But gathered around church, uh, last year, year before last, Miss Peggy was back to take the table before church started, and I went back there, and I said, babe, I need a mint. I said, my breath smells like vinegar. And she said, well, it's in my purse up there on the front seat. So I got up there at the front seat, and I'm looking through her purse, and this woman come up, and she said, can I help you? And I said, no, ma'am, I'm just looking for a mint. She said, well, I don't have any. And I said, ma'am, is this your purse? And she said, yes, it is. I said, I noticed there's some things in there Peggy didn't normally carry, but I said, I didn't, it never dawned on me. So she went to the back and Peggy come up there and she said, I can't leave you alone five minutes without you getting in somebody else's purse. What's wrong with you? So, but everything we, we've been and everything we've done in our lifetime has been around church and what have you and, and what we've done and and just, you know, living the life of church. But when I was a kid coming up, I, it, we didn't have much. We didn't have very many toys that we had. Uh, so at Christmas time, us kids would all go to school and lie. we just tell everybody what we didn't have. You know, we got this for Christmas when we really got a package of Green Army men. And Dad divvied it up to all of us, you know, and that's what we got for Christmas. But we got bicycles and all that. So I told and all of us kids get together and we just make it up. That's what we're going to tell we got for Christmas because we was embarrassed. So a lot of times it just done us good when we go visit Grandma to get in the 5 and 10 cent store. In fact, is they still have one at Branson and Walmart took their place. But uh, 5 and 10 cent store was this store. Some of you may not know what it is, but... It was kind of a variety store. They just had, and the racks come down the aisle, and there's a, a table here and a rack up the back of it. And on the back side of it is the same thing. Well, my grandmother and her sister had taken me and my brother Terry to town. And uh, we were there and, and uh, looking through all of this, and, and I could see through the crack there that Grandma and Eva was standing there at the women's lingerie. They had a big pile of uh, underwear that was there on the other side. And they're, boy, they're, they're looking through that. They're finding their sizes, you know. And, and so I went down the toy rack, and I, I found a rubber snake about this long, just a rubber snake. And because my grandma and, my, and my, uh, her sister terrified of a snake. And I come over here, and I just throwed it up in the air. And it landed in that pile of underwear. <laughs> and they thought it fell out of the ceiling. They thought it was, and it was amazing. Both of them squeezed a gallon of water out of that rubber snake. I mean, they went all the way to the front of, of the store. So I grew up, you know, just having fun like that. We always had a lot of fun. And, and in Sunday school, you know, Sunday school, great time. And, and uh, of course, they don't do this now, but my dad used to whip us boys. There's five of us boys and one girl. 
And uh, dad would just beat the fire out of us kids. Okay. Fact is, you can never collect insurance when he got okay. done with you. And it, that was a common thing for us. We just got a whipping all the time. Got one every Sunday night. That was part of the program. Only reason I didn't get one Sunday morning, I went home with somebody after church. I'm not completely stupid, you know that. But I, I'd go home with somebody. And, and uh, so Dad would just, uh, he would just wear us out. In fact is, in those days, some of the church people would just wear us out. Now, you'd be, you would be sued for that, but Dad would thank them. After church, shake your hand, pat their back, and hug their neck, say, thank you, taking care of my boys. And I'm over there thinking, my God, help us. There's no getting away with nothing around here. You can't get by with nothing. But anyway, I was in Sunday school class one time, and I was 13. It was the year before I started preaching. And we had a Sunday school teacher who uh, had a German Shepherd dog, and she loved that dog. I mean, she loved that dog. Well, we loved our dogs, but not like she loved hers. And, it, and her dog's name was Rex. And for, so the first 15 minutes of every Sunday school class, all we heard about Rex. We didn't hear about Jesus. We heard about Rex. And I mean, she'd tell you about Rex. Oh, she loved that dog. And then one Sunday morning, she'd come in there and she spent, she'd come through the door and she had been crying. And she was, she said, I'm going to tell you about Rex. And she just busted out crying. Rex had got run over uh, the, uh, on Saturday, the day before that. So she was real tore up about that. And she got talking about Rex going to heaven. And he was in the presence of God. And God was loving on him. And God, and I know oh, he's just whining and moaning and God just loving on him. I lifted my hand and she said, what do you want? So, you know, with that, I knew she didn't much care for me, but, but that's just neither here nor there. And I said, Rex busted hell wide open. He went straight to hell. And I'd growl when I'd say it. He went straight to hell. He's in hell. Every hair is burned off of him. He's howling, he's whining. He is just in a pitiful shape. He went to hell. I said that was the meanest dog it was in the country. He jumped on every dog around. He went to hell. That dog's in hell right now. And she went to cry and she ran out of the room. And uh, it wasn't a minute, arms slipped through the door and done this like this. And there's just five of us in Sunday school class. We was the boys' class. It, Dad took me behind the church. He whipped, he slapped, he knocked, he carried on. He said, ain't none of your business where Rex went. You don't know where Rex went. And when he got done with me, I, he convinced me that I didn't know where Rex had went or Rex had gone to. So most of our life, we just grew up in Sunday school and around church and all the things that, that involved in church, and we've had a good time doing it. And, and I'm a builder by trade. I built a lot of houses, helped people get in houses that normally couldn't afford it. And when I pastored in Pine Bluff, Arkansas, I was building a house for one of the guys of church as a trustee. And, and, and uh, we, we got the house up, and I got it in the dry. And uh, the table saw threw a board out, and it went through a window, broke that window all to pieces. And I had bought my stuff in Little Rock, which is uh, about 40 mile away. And so I decided that they might have a matching window down at Railroad Salvage and because they buy uh, overstock and freight and all that. So I went down there, and uh, they had been talking about shutting Railroad Salvage down because so much thievery. And they'd had dogs and all this other. They had a 12-foot chain-link fence up there with barbed wire around the top of it. And, and the people that were stealing would put a ladder up there and they'd put a quilt on that barbed wire and to bring a ladder up there and put it on the other side. Then they'd just throw all kinds of material out there and they would steal until they got a line, L-I-O-N. They got a line and they turned that line loose in there at night and they never missed another thing. But nobody told me about the line. I didn't know they had a line in there. And so I went down there to check about this window, 
and uh, uh, behind the deep pole, they had built a big shed out there, and all their windows are stacked up there, the different sizes, and the, and the deep pole was long, man, it was long, big, heavy fence around it, and I, I bet they, they had two or three hundred windows back there, so I, I went to that door and opened it up, and I whistled, and I hollered, I knew if there's a dog back there, he'd come, nothing came, so I just, I'm good. I'm just walking down through there, and I'm looking at all them windows. And when I got three-fourths of the way back, stepping out from behind some patio doors is this line. I mean, I took a double take. I'm thinking, most folks got a dog. What's the deal here? <laughs> a line. He stood up about this tall, had a mane. It was the most powerful thing I've ever had a hold of in my life. And here he come. He's pigeon-toed. I didn't know lines were pigeon-toed, but their feet go right in front of that. And I'm telling you a fact, I've seen this. And I've seen he had a collar on him, so my best, my best way of this is get a hold of that collar. Well, the first lick, he knocked me down. And he'd roll me around like a bone, but I didn't stay down. Fact is, I got up six different times. I was muddy as a hog, but I kept making my way back to the gate and when I got back to the gate, I just shut my arm up in that gate and just peeled up, went over and sat down on a pile of shingles, and I said, my Lord, thank you for saving my life. But my, I got a deacon and trustee that needs to share this experience. So I, I called my friend up, whom I'm building the house, and I said, I believe they've got your window down here. I said, I'm not sure, but I want you to come and identify. I want you to come and look at this window. He said, I'll be right down there. I said, well, give me time. So I went back and took a shower and cleaned up because I knew if he seen me as dirty as I was because that line rolled me around like a bone in that dirt. I was muddy when I come out of there. And so I got down there and I met him down there and I said, I believe your window's at the very end down there. That's what I think. Now, I'm not sure, but I'm almost positive you'll find it down there. He started down there. And when he did, I run over there to lock him in that uh, pen and just let him get a lot of experience with that line. And a guy on a forklift went to holler at him and said, there's a line in there. He knocked me down, nearly tore that gate off the hinges, getting out of there. And he told me, he said, preacher, I would have killed you dead. But he said, first of all, I'd have broke every window back there in that place trying, trying to get out of there. So, I, you know, just, just having your own fun, good, clean, line fun. That's right. And, uh, but Miss Peggy and I, we've, we've spent, as I said earlier, we've spent a lot of our years of marriage in a, in a camper trailer. So we're acquainted with campgrounds and churches and all that, and we've lived in all kinds of camper trailers. But uh, several years ago, there's a, a campground that uh, got a letter from a lady, and she's very pious and very refined and uh, didn't want to use a certain words. So she uh, wrote a letter to this campground and wanted to know did they have uh, what kind of facilities they had and also if they had a shower house. And then she wanted to know if they had a bathroom commode. But she didn't use commode, so she just put BC. That's what she does. She just initialed it. Do you have a BC? Well, when the caretakers got the letter, they read this letter, but they couldn't figure out what she's talking about, a B.C., bathroom commode. So they decided she's talking about a Baptist church. That's what they decided. So they wrote her back, and this is what they wrote to the lady. They said, we're glad to receive your letter. And yes, we do have a shower house. And yes, there is a B.C. here. It's five miles from the campground and said, we run a van two times a week. <laughs> and, and it will seat 250 people at one time. I uh, said, me and my wife don't go anymore, but we used to go twice a year. <laughs> and we found great comfort in that. Okay, um, but if you want to go to the BC when you get here, we'll go with you. We'll sit with you. And we would love that. It's just, and, and we do run the van twice a week. You'll have a great time when you go to the BC. Everybody that's gone loves it. Everybody that's been there has a great time. You know, there, there's a, a, a lot of uh, validity in the fact of misunderstandings. When you have misunderstandings, they can be good, they can be funny, 
or they can be bad as well. So whenever they wrote this letter to this lady, she was excited, but she was also confused about a bathroom commode being five miles and them running the van, and the, and the caretaker only went twice a year to that, but they found comfort whenever they went. So that was a great deal for, for them whenever they went there. And, you know, so carving, coming up in the, remember the old church pews, the old, old church pews, they wasn't, uh, they were made out of one befores. You know, when one person got up on this end, you better get up. Because it would paint you. Them boards were close together. And when, especially a heavy person got up on this end, them boards were close together, and there you are. I mean to tell you, there you are. Well, one day I got off the bus. My dad pastored at Mountain View, Arkansas. And I got off the school bus, and he was waiting for me on the front porch. And he picked my arm above my head, my feet hitting the ground every now and then. And uh, he took me over to church. He hadn't even said, hello, son, do you have a good day? He hadn't said nothing. I just hear him saying, you're going to pay for this. You're going to pay for this. He took me over there and slammed me down on the second seat from the front and said, look at there. Look, look, look what happened yesterday. This was on Monday. Look what happened there yesterday. Look at them initials. Carved in that seat, brand new carving. Now, I had planned to take some dirt and smear in that, make it look old, but I didn't have a chance. He discovered it on Monday. He don't ever go to church on Monday. He'd done been there on Sunday, so he wasn't going to go back to church on Monday, but he did. And he said, I wonder whose initials that could be. D.C. He was making a big issue out of it, and I said, Danny Kirby. He said, no, stooge. Kirby don't start with a C. I looked at it again. I said, Danny Quarter. Danny wasn't sitting there yesterday. You was. Now then, you better give your heart to God because the rest of you is mine. And he made a believer out of me. I mean, he made a believer out of me. That same church, we pastored at Mountain View, and my dad's folks lived in Dexter, Missouri, which is a six-hour trip. And school had just, just got out, and me and my brother Terry, every summer we'd get to go stay with Grandma for a month, and sometimes two months during the summer. Oh, it was good. Grandma treated us great. We would get spending money, and uh, that was, oh, my. I remember some visiting kids come to visit their grandma one time, and they talked about an allowance. That's the first I'd heard about one. An allowance. They got a quarter a week. So I went to dad and I said, they got an allowance. He said, oh. I said, yes, they're getting a quarter a week. Now, some of you kids think, a quarter? Well, that was a big deal back then. But uh, he said, well, here's uh, what we're going to do if you want allowance. We we had a, a couple hogs and we had chickens and we had rabbits and we raised everything nearly that we eat. And when he got through lining out what I was supposed to do, it was a dollar's worth. And all he wanted to do was give me a quarter. And so I decided I'm better off without allowance. But he told me, he said, now, son, he said, you and Terry, if the offering is good Sunday, we'll go to Grandma's on Monday. If the offering's good at the church Sunday, I'll take, we'll leave and we'll go to Grandma's on Monday and you boys can stay there. So Sunday morning, I got up bright and early, and I got ready, and I, I went to Mom, and I said, Mom, I want to sit on the fifth seat from the front. Now, Dad was lenient. He let us sit on the first two seats of the front, either side, but it had to be on the first two seats where Mama could reach us. Now, Mama is 4 foot 11 inches tall, but had an had a arm span of over 8 foot. Now, I, I never measured that, but I can tell you for sure, she can reach 8 foot. And she'd do her finger like this, and she'd just pop on the back of your head. You know, and if you turned around to look at her, they call that sassin. Them. That word is taken out of the English vocabulary. Now we don't even have that anymore, but it was sassin then. And if you turn around, she's still there. She put another knot right here. 
So you have matching knots. That's the reason they call us knot heads most of the time. <laughs> we, we would wear a knot most of the time on our head, one on the back, one on the front. It matched. Couldn't be horns. Horns come out the side. These were knots, one on the back and one on the front. And I told mama, I said, let me sit on the fifth seat from the front. She said, no, you won't behave. You just won't behave. So finally, I just kept on and kept on and kept on. She said, why do you want to sit on the fifth seat from the front? I said, I've never seen a service from the fifth seat on the front. I want to see what church is like on the fifth seat from the front. And she said, all right, but one peep out of you, one peep out of you. So as soon as Sunday school was over, boy, I got out there where I could sit on the end. You know, as a kid, they would make you move down the seat a little bit when adults come in, but not me. I'm hanging on that side, and I just turn sideways and let everybody in. What I wanted to do was see the offering. And uh, so Mama's sitting on the second seat from the front, a lady by the name of Sister Lipter was sitting beside her. And, and the offering, it wasn't bags then, it was plates. The offering plate went by me so fast, I didn't have time to see what was in there. And so I'm thinking, boy, I've just blown this. I've sat on the fifth seat from the front. What a privilege that is, but I have blown this. But the offering stopped over there where Mama, because Sister Littrell had her money tied up in, in a handkerchief. And she's sitting there and tying her mama, uh, money, and Mama's sitting there holding the offering pan on this side. So I stood up, fifth seat from the front, and I said, does it look like there's enough in there to go to Grandma's own? And then all of a sudden, lightning struck. My arm went above my head. My feet hitting the ground every now and then. Went outside, then Dad brought me back and put me right on the front seat. And I'm sitting there snubbing. He's up there playing the guitar and the song stopped and I looked at him and I said, all I wanted to know if there was enough in there to go to Grandma's home. Boy, the arm's back up again. We're headed back outside again. I just couldn't get it right some way. <laughs> but oh, we grew up in a very, 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 very tough time and just... Uh, I told mom one time, I said, boy, I remember the Depression. She said, oh, you don't remember the Depression back in the 30s. You wasn't born to 55. I said, yes, but the Depression for us was in the 60s. <laughs> yeah, there was two Depressions. You may not knew about the one in the 60s, but there was a Depression. We didn't have running water. We didn't have indoor bathrooms. We had outhouses. That's the reason I know a lot about outhouses. Our running water is when we run to Turkey Pen Springs and got it. And we would bring it back in cream cans and set it on the porch and lands. In the wintertime, we had to set, we had to drag them cream cans in the house, keep the water from freezing. But that's, that's how we lived our life. And, and so with all of that in mind, you know, we had outhouses and we had uh, all kinds of uh, uh, fun stuff. Uh, our... Uh, the, the outhouses was built up in the back, if you don't know anything about that, where well, you could clean them out. And, uh, and you had to clean them out every once in a while, lime them down. And, but us boys, uh, we had company come to see us, and we'd run in the outhouse, and then we'd climb down that hole and just stand on them two befores and get down in that hole like this. And they thought because we was Pentecostal, we was magic. Because they'd open the door, they knew, they'd seen us run in, and we, it's just one little room there with two holes in the boards, and they'd open that door, and we're gone. How did they do that? I guess they thought most folks got more sense than to climb down the hole of the outhouse. But, but we didn't. We didn't have that much sense. It, just, it was just a place to be. <laughs> so so we, we went down there, and we would... Uh, we would